Andrew McCabe was supposed to be retired right now. He'd served in the FBI for more than two decades and rose to be the Bureau's deputy director. But on Friday night, around 10 p.m. Eastern, he was stripped of his federal pension just 48 hours before it was set to kick in, fired by Attorney General Jeff Sessions for, quote, lack of candor under oath on multiple occasions. President Trump, a long critic of McCabe, called the termination a great day for democracy. McCabe maintains he was sacked to undermine the credibility of the special counsel's investigation. He's turned over memos of his conversations with the president to Robert Mueller's team. There's, of course, a firestorm of reaction pouring in. When the president said it was a, a great day for democracy yesterday, I think it was a horrible day for democracy. I, to have uh, firings like this happening uh, at the top uh, from the president and the attorney general um, does not speak well for what's going on. You know, his firing may be justified. There's no way for us to know at this point. But even the, though it may have been justified, it can also be tainted. It was clearly rushed, and I think there are questions about that and whether the administration was putting pressure on the, on the Justice Department to take this action. It appears to have been compressed in order to take vengeance on this guy. Andy McCabe has undercut his credibility all by himself. Uh, he didn't need any help doing that. Former CIA Director John Brennan didn't hold back his disdain for Mr. Trump on Twitter. Quote, when the full extent of your venality, moral turpitude, and political corruption becomes known, you will take your rightful place as a disgraced demagogue in the dustbin of history. You may scapegoat Andy McCabe, but you will not destroy America. America will triumph over you. That's a little okay. over hot. <laughs> a little over the top there for Mr. Brennan. What I found interesting, Kimberly, is in that montage we Everything. just played, <laughs> yes, Adam Schiff, a pretty partisan uh, Democrat, he said... Could be a possibility that this firing of McCabe was completely justified. What do you think about the firing? That tells me everything you kind of need to know. He wouldn't be going out on a limb and saying something like that that might uh, displease his uh, partisan, you know, base that thinks that President Trump is just, you know, running amok here. Um, by saying that, tells me that he has knowledge and information to suggest that, in fact, it was justified. I think they wouldn't have go out of their way to do it when they did and uh, how they did it if they didn't have good reason and full cause and hadn't investigated it thoroughly. And in fact, the people making the recommendation the people that work with him at the FBI. Right. So that really, I think, is uh, quite dispositive, you know, of the issue. I mean, you brought a nice like, humanitarian point to it last week, and you said, well, it's two days before the guy's, you know, um, retirement was going to be up. So you look at that aspect of it. But nevertheless, if the facts are there and persuasive and compelling, then they have to follow through with it. One, people are saying that if it was just a regular guy in the FBI who, you know, out in the field, and he did what McCabe did, he'd be treated the exact same way. Do you understand that argument? Uh, I, I don't think that's true, but I understand the argument. I think what's true is that, you know, FBI agents are not rich people, and they really rely on pensions. And so typically there's a lot of leeway given, especially respect the idea, oh, he's got two days to go, we'll let it happen. But I think what happened here is we don't know. And so what you're seeing Adam Schiff say is it could be that, Adam Schiff is just protecting himself uh, from possible blowback. If you get a report from the Inspector General of the Office of Professional Responsibility that indicates that McCabe either lied or was not forthcoming with them, then you would say, okay, so there was justification for it. What we do know is that McCabe has said that's not true, that he either was in chaos and was misunderstood or whatever, but he says he did not lie or mislead them. So that's all we have on the table at the moment, Jesse. But I will say this. Given the politics surrounding everything going on, from the Comey firing to the House Intelligence Committee last week saying, oh, yeah, Russia, they, they didn't favor Donald Trump. Uh, you know, it just looks like when you look at this, you can't ignore the politics. And the politics are stinky. You know, obviously, a lot of politics in Washington. That's to be expected, <laughs> Dana. Uh, do you think it was a little harsh? Or do you think, um, you know, if the internal investigators think he did a bad thing, he should suffer the consequences? Well, I would like to see the full report before making a determination because uh, without that, we're just basically going on gut instinct or what we hear or what might have been leaked or not. So until we have that. But I would say that politics are played except for that they're... If the president hadn't tweeted about this on Saturday morning and rubbing McCabe's face in it, then the storyline would have been the whole weekend is that the Office of Professional Responsibility recommended this firing. 
Um, okay. And so that, I think, would have been a nice place to just leave it right there and let everybody talk about the Office of Professional Responsibility. That didn't happen. And that didn't happen. It usually doesn't <laughs> when the president tweets. Greg, what are your thoughts? Oh, I, well, my first thoughts, Dana, hair looks great. Oh, thank <laughs> thanks, everyone. Uh, yeah, thanks. yeah. You're done. We, you know, don't I was, pretend not to notice. Uh, I was more paying a, attention to what she was saying. I, 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 I can the, do both. For the center <laughs> right? part, I, I'm a multitasker. Now, right? I can't. <laughs> the, okay, let's, the, the weird thing here is Brennan's manifesto of a tweet, which mm -hmm. uh, was almost like written as part of a West Wing script left over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and then, but then what happens after he says all this magical, you know, uh, manicured stuff, Samantha Powers retweets and writes, don't like, don't mess yeah. with. You don't want to get this guy angry. Yeah. It's like high school. It's like being in a high school cafeteria, and the cheerleader runs over and says, "Let me hold your jacket because you're going to get in a fight." I mean, maybe that's the submission that Hillary keeps talking about. But, um, <laughs> but his his anger it, it reflects the deep animosity. Uh, that validates Trump's assumptions and asser assertions about people in power who want him gone. That's the hood ornament. That tweet is the hood ornament of all of these people who sincerely believe that there is a bad man in the White House and they got to get him out. And it and and it's it's the if you notice it's the circle of media, and the circle of the Trump critics and they match perfectly. So that they're a self-perpetuating engine of panic. So the media says, oh, my God, he's evil, he's evil. And then you have this dude, and you have Comey, and you got the other guy, and this guy, who are in the government saying the same thing. These are the same people. The media and, and these, uh, these, I guess you would call them Washington insiders or established, whatever. The reactions are 99.9% .9 identical. So... That's where you get the hysteria and the panic because they're constantly, mm -hmm. it's, there's no yin and yang. It's yin and yin. Well, do you ever think that it's that a possibility have... that Donald Trump is in the middle of the yin and yang and that they're, they're reacting to something very real? I would say that if, the, if there was some kind of variability in the reaction, but when it's this uniform and hysterical, it makes me think that it is almost emotionally driven. And also uniform was the reaction to this, and everybody says the next step, Mueller's gone. And let's hear some of that. I don't know what the designs are on Mueller, but it seems to be building toward that. And I just hope it doesn't go there because uh, it can't. I mean, we, we can't in Congress accept that. If he tried to do that, that would be the beginning and the end of his presidency because we're a rule of law nation. I would hope that it would prompt uh, all Democrats and Republicans in the House to pass an independent counsel law. Uh, and reinstate Bob Mueller. Uh, this would undoubtedly result in a constitutional crisis. And I think Democrats and Republicans need to speak out about this right now. So, Kimberly, do you believe there is momentum building for firing Mueller? Or, as Greg said, is this just this self perpetuation with the media and the Democrats where they almost want this to happen and yeah. they're pushing it? It's a little bit of the self perpetuation mm -hmm. merry go round, the one <laughs> that you want to get out of before you throw up. <laughs> it's just round and round. But, yeah, I don't think that he's going to make a move like that. I think it would be ill advised at this point to do something like that, given that this has already gone so far down the road. There's sort of on the five-inch line, let them complete the investigation. I don't see any upside for the president in removing him at this juncture, only downside. There'll be a tremendous amount of fallout and criticism. We saw that when uh, that happened with Comey, okay? And I just don't think this should um, follow in the footsteps. You've got McCabe gone. Do the investigation, complete it, come to the conclusion, uh, see it through to, you know, all the way through fruition and then see what we but have. But, Jesse, this with. isn't the first time that the president may have thought about firing Mueller. Remember, last June, right. there and were he reports didn't do in it. January that, oh, he's being thinking about it. And then people say, oh, no, no, he would never do it. The and then, it, then it was confirmed that, in fact, he was thinking of doing just that. And now, again, what we've seen this weekend, boy, I thought he just was manic in the tweets, the attacks. On the intelligence community, the FBI, I just, I mean, well, there was a deflection. <sighs> Trump was tweeting, so you didn't notice that he was colluding with Putin to win the election <laughs> in, in Russia. That was that he was helping Putin. He was helping Putin win. You know, I want to give you that. I showed up today. I, 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 I wanted this. to give you a new conspiracy. <laughs> I I this. He helped Putin become this. president for life. That's your new conspiracy. Okay. The best part of this, <laughs> and I know you hate the word. Virtue signaling, okay, two words. It. I don't have a All man. the people offering to pay the pension for McKay or to pay yeah. for the next mm -hmm. thing. It's like they care so much about a questionable bureaucrat's pension than actual real suffering. Oh, that's a good point. Thank um, you. We'll be right back. All right. President oh, no, Trump. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> anything anything like you'd like to add at the well, end? Uh, here's what I would say. Um, 
<laughs> it's just a little bit of advice. You know, I, I was spokesperson for Carl Rove during the special counsel, and it's very difficult to figure out the legal strategy and the communication strategy, but they really must work in tandem. It's a terrible idea for the lawyers to be out front and not in communication or coordination with the PR people because the other thing that happened this weekend or this past week is you had reports that questions from the Mueller team had gone to Trump's lawyers about these are the types of things we might want to ask him if we were to have an interview with him. So they're negotiating that. So now the president knows what that is. There's a subpoena to the Trump organization. There's McCabe's firing. There's the Dowd comments, the, his lawyer's right. comments. Uh, about Mueller that this should all end. And he says, yes, I'm speaking on behalf of the president. And now we're like, oh, actually, no, I'm speaking in my own capacity. I don't believe any of that. I actually think that the pro one of their major problems is they have to get their PR people lined up and in sync with their legal people or they're going to continue to have news cycles like that. Yeah, it's just amazing after all this, Dana, that Hillary was the one that colluded with the Russians. Yeah. <laughs>